So who knew there were so many other racing sims besides iRacing? Okay, probably most of you. But if you want an unbiased comparison between Dirt Rally 2.0 and Rallycross and iRacing, then you've clicked on the right video. Welcome to Boomer Studios. I picked the Hale Rallycross track in Norway for my comparison for a couple of reasons. First, this track is modeled in both sims, so it makes the playing field even. Second, and probably more importantly, although I've had this track in iRacing since its release, I've only driven on it a couple of times before this comparison, so I won't have an advantage in knowing the track. Alright, so we'll start out in Dirt Rally 2. I'll drive a lap, and then I'll drive a lap in iRacing. And we'll compare some of the differences. Uh, just pay particular attention to the graphic quality, the sound, uh, the driving style, stuff like that. I'll explain some of the things that I see and notice. Coming up on the end of the first lap here. Now we're in iRacing. So one of the first things you notice is the sound. To me, this almost sounds like an electric car compared to the sound, engine sound in Dirt Rally 2. Also, the graphics. Uh, the graphics aren't as detailed. Now, granted, this is a quite a bit older sim, and it is based on multiplayer, based around multiplayer. So it, it does have that, but the sound quality is definitely different. Also the driving style uh, between the two. I find myself in iRacing, I use the handbrake a whole lot more. You can see the animation here where I'm shifting and the next lever over is the handbrake, and I very seldom reach up for the handbrake in dirt rally. After a few laps of practicing, I find that it's quicker to drive it like a car on pavement. Drive it just like you would racing on the road. 40.88. We're here in high racing. You don't get the hand animation shifting and handbrake and such. But I do have to use the handbrake to get the rear end to come around on this this section. You see my ghost car out there where I did it left prior. And coming up on the end of this lap. see in iRacing is rain. It's a pretty unique experience for me, in, uh, especially in VR. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm, having to, I'm leaning forward to try to see out the windshield better. Uh, you might be able to tell because the bottom of the screen, my gear shifter so appears closer. That's because I'm actually leaning forward. The car handles like on mud and slick roads, just like you would expect. A much more tenuous operation, so to speak. And here's a replay that I did of an AI race in these weather conditions. You can see the graphics are amazing. The AI is has trouble as much as anything in the rain weather conditions. Uh, maybe not as much trouble as I do, but one of the things that I really don't like about this is the way the replay functions. It's a flat screen in VR. You don't have the ability to look around like you do in iRacing. Uh, and also you don't get the ability to save the replay but, and go back and change your views or to 
or content creators, you know, make the video. All you can do is record it while it plays. Now you can change views with key commands or, or whatnot, but you only get the one chance while it's playing. And I wish you could save the replay. Now in iRacing, you do get the 3D world while you're in the replay mode. So you can look around at other cars, if, if there's other cars on the track, if you recorded a race. Look around at other vehicles. Some of the scenery. Although there's not as much scenery in iRacing as there is in Dirt Rally 2. But it is still a full 3D world when you're in VR to look around. And also in iRacing you get the ability to paint your own cars with a website called Trading Paints. See I have my logo on here. Another difference is, that you have with Dirt Rally 2 is the repair time between heats or between the heats and the main event. See you have specific amount of time there make any repairs back on the grid and get back in the race another difference is the way that the car tuning is handled here you can see in dirt rally two different adjustments that you can make as the sliders shows you on the car what what you're doing uh, you get you get quite a bit of adjustment here as I cycle through the different uh, positions that you can do. Start out with alignment and brakes, change your gearing, differential, differential first, then the gearing. Then we jump over to dampening, shocks, front and back, springs, front and back. Shows you what over graphically what each one does that's kind of that's kind of nice now we jump into the garage in iRacing here's the tire pressure on the chassis you got uh, quite a bit more changes that you can do to include fuel level your gearbox differential launch control your rpm and if you need to make any notes about the setup, if you're going to share it with somebody, save it. Yeah, I have several saved. If you can take your car for different tracks, iRacing also has several setups, base setups for each track. Uh, mentioned sharing. You get any shared if you're in in a session with someone else share share your setups everyone or specific people and you can also export it to an html file and view it in a outside third party program to see what different changes are between two setups and finally, quit out, quit, and get the chance to save your replay. It's awesome. Let's see, I've saved a few. All right, to wrap this thing up, we'll run down the quick highlights, uh, pros and cons of each. Start with Dirt Rally. Pros that we have, we have the graphics, sound quality, you do have the AI racing, and the weather. The uh, rain is pretty fun. Some of the cons, the graphic inter user interface for the VR, uh, kind of lacking in the flat, flat screen that it is. Low volume of multiplayer. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe because it's not really rally cross focused. It's you do get the point to point rally, which is also fun. I haven't done it, done much of that. 
I will be doing some videos on that later. Uh, simplistic car setup. It's a little more simplistic than the iRacing version, but it's still, I, I like the graphic interface that you get with the setup. And the big one is no way to save replays. So I really, really wish that they had a way to save replay. And no custom paints. iRacing. Pros we have here is the graphic user interface for VR. You do you stay in the 3D world even if you're look watching replays. The availability of multiplayer, since its primary focus is multiplayer. You you can almost always find other people online looking for rally cross races or the uh, the normal scheduled official races. More detailed car setup. That's uh it's not as much more detailed as I initially thought when comparing the two side by side, but you do get some more options. And the ability to save replays is the big one here. Custom paints. You see the, the picture here. I've got my logo painted on a on a car that I decorated up. Uh, some of the cons. Graphics. They're while they're good, they're not as good as Dirt Rally 2. Sound quality, same thing. Some cars are better than others. This car just happens to sound like a electric motor. No AI racing. A uh, lack of AI racing. If you if you want that thing, you do. You have multiplayer and no AI here, and vice versa in Dirt Rally. So. It's nice to practice against AI. And lack of rainy weather. No, uh, You get day and night, but no rain. This track is not lit, so I didn't want to do a night race here. So we have Dirt Rally 2.0 versus iRacing Rallycross. You decide. Be sure to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.